Welcome to the story of Prince Pereru Deba and Princess Chine Yenwa. Many years ago, in a very large and wealthy village called Ishekiri Olu Kingdom, there lived a very intelligent young girl, Chine Yenwa, who is the last child of her parents. She has two elder sisters and is a father's favorite. Chine Yenwa Ebo met Prince Pereru Deba Ishelu for the first time at the Ishelu Community Center local swimming pool. The grey-eyed prince was sipping palm wine with his grey-eyed younger brothers when he noticed that a young boy, whom he estimated to be five years younger than himself, was bullying a very young plum girl. He couldn't see her chubby face very well but he saw the boy trying to grab the book she had in her hands while she was running away from him. Eventually, he caught up with her and snatched the book. She began begging him to give her back her book, but the bully kept laughing at her, calling her a fat, short lady, asking her to jump up and grab the book if she can. The prince realized he was already on his feet and moving towards the young lady and the bully. The bully threw the book into the pool just as it got to them. And poor Chinayenwa, without thinking, dived into the pool to retrieve her book, forgetting she is unable to swim. It was sort of a reflex action for her. When the bully saw the very tall and muscular prince, coming towards him. He quickly ran away. Then the prince looked back at the pool and realized that Chine Yenwa, aka Chini, is almost drowning. He immediately dived in and rescued her along with her precious wet book to safety. He made sure he got all the water out of her lungs. Then he looked into her eyes as she opened them to stare at him. This young girl can be more than 13 years old, but she has one of the most interesting faces he has ever seen in his entire life. He thought distractedly. As she looked at him, she whispered, You saved me and you look like a prince. He smiled and replied, I am a prince, my dear. But why did you risk your life for an ordinary book? It's not an ordinary book, she interrupted him. My best friend gifted me that book on my 13th birthday just before she died two years ago. So that book is very precious to me, as it is also the story of two best friends. Oh, I am sorry for your loss, he said realizing she was actually 15 years old. But please don't dive into a pool next time since you don't know how to swim. Here is your book. I wish you the best in life, young lady, he said and turned to leave as her elder sister arrived by the poolside to take her from his arms. The next time Chini laid eyes on the prince, at close proximity was some four years later. She was 19 years old and had lost her chubbiness. There was something incredibly interesting about her light-skinned face. Though she was not gorgeous like her immediate elder sister, Buchi Onome, aka Buchi, who is a very light-skinned, drop-dead gorgeous, vain, spoiled brat and her lovely elder sister, Agogo, a.k.a. Agi. But Chini's body figure is perfectly curvaceous. Over the years, Chini has been seeing the prince with his younger siblings from afar whenever he is back home from the city. He's called overseas and lives in the city with his immediate younger brother, who is a respected military man. 
their father, the king, is very, very dark in complexion and has gray eyes, just like all his children. And this has always been so, from one Ishelu generation to another. Every Ishelu child must be dark with beautiful gray eyes. When Chini heard that the king was throwing a mask and costume party for the prince's 25th birthday at the Ishelu Palace Party Hall, she was happy that her family got an invite because her father is an Ishekiri Olu chief. She and her sister started getting ready with their costumes and masks. She has heard many rumors from people that her immediate elder sister, who is the most beautiful of the three of them, is promiscuous, but she refused to believe it, especially since she is already engaged to be married to the son of the village chief headmaster who stays overseas, and also because she loves and admires her sister. Her sisters were a world, and they are both aware of her infatuation with the prince. They call him a hero. The Ebers arrived at the party around 7 p.m. in the night and started mingling with other guests. Chief Ebel had to speak up for Chini before her mother allowed her to go be on her own instead of chatting other guests with them. Now, as Chini was left alone, she turned to scan the party hall for the prince. When she did not see him, she started thinking he might be outside in the gardens or at the palace balcony with his brothers. She felt someone's eyes on her back. When she turned to look, she immediately sighted the prince, standing a short distance away, dressed in navy blue shirt and trousers with no mask on, and he seemed to be staring directly at her. She had a peach mask on and was wearing a peach-colored lovely gown. Chini lost the ability to breathe. He could not be staring at her that way, so intensely, as if he were a lion about to pounce on his prey. She turned to see what lovely lady stood beside her. But no one was there. She was by herself, quiet, alone, almost disbelieving. She faced him again, only to find he was now walking towards her. So she panicked. What does he want from her? It is not possible that he could have recognized her as a plum girl he had saved from drowning some years ago. He was the heir apparent to the throne, as wealthy as she was poor. Of high class as she was a lower class, she couldn't imagine what he wanted. Her heart was beating so fast as she turned and fled out of the party hall, suddenly terrified. She found herself in one of the palace dining rooms, filled with several guests. There, she leaned against the wall to rest a bit from her running. And then, he suddenly strode into the room, sighting her immediately. He slowly walked to her and said, Why are you running from me? She tried to answer him, but could only shake her head. It seems he has confused her with someone else. He moved so close to her now, looking at her thoroughly to her perfect curves that had captured his attention in the first place. Then he leaned even closer until there was no space between both of them and whispered, May I know your name, please? She realized her mouth has gone dry as his presence has started affecting her senses. So instead of giving him a real name, she told him to call her Peaches, which made him laugh. Oh, okay, if that is how you want it. 
I will learn your real name before this night ends. But I am so curious now and cannot stop myself. I have to see the face of the woman behind the mask. Oh no, my prince, I cannot allow that. And she ran again for the second time that evening. But he started chasing her and they were both laughing like children by the time he caught up with her in the west wing of the palace garden. They sat down on a padded bench, still laughing. Then very slowly, he started removing a mask and she allowed him. By the time he beheld her face, he did not speak for a long time. He just kept looking at her. Until Chini wondered what he found interesting to look at in her face. She was not a great beauty like her sisters. She was just a little pretty and that was it. But a deep spark had appeared in his eyes as he spoke. You are excused. His gaze drifted to her mouth as he started bending his head. But Chini put a hand to his chest to stop him, whispering breathlessly, someone might see. He stopped and looked besottedly into her eyes. Then he lifted his right fingers to touch her velvety skin, brushing them against her right cheek. Then he placed a soft peck on the cheek and whispered, Meet me here later tonight, in two hours time. She lifted her own left finger stool to touch his cheek, then nodded yes in excitement and fled from him as he released her into the night. One hour later, Chini was still smiling sheepishly as she daydreamed about what will happen when she finally meets with the prince at the west wing of the palace garden. Then her elder sister, Butchie's shrill cry, snapped her back to reality. She jumped up and found Butchie hurrying towards her in tears. Chini was immediately concerned. What is wrong? she cried. Thank God I have found you. Some careless man has spilled fruit wine all over my white gown, which she said, with tears flowing from her face. I look dirty and Mama has instructed me to go home. She wiped at her tears and said, But a great idea came to me. You have always hated social events. Please, Chini, switch your peach dress with my stained white dress. I really want to stay. I will soon be wed and have no freedom again. Surely you are ready to go home? Chini gasped in dismay. Butchie continued, Please, Chini, help me. You go home so I can enjoy the last moments of my freedom before marriage. Besides, I am older than you and should be the one to stay. And just like that, Chini felt the magic vanishing from the night. She has never refused her sister anything. She closed her eyes and fought her heart. A part of her was screaming inwardly in protest, refusing. Eventually, she gave in to her sister. She was sad as she left for home with her father. Thinking about the prince and wondering how angry and disappointed he would be when he finally realizes that she was not going to show up for what was supposed to be their first magical night together. Thank you everyone for watching and that is the end of episode 1. Episode 2 is surely on the way. Please let me have some feedback in the comment section. Let us know maybe she made a mistake by allowing her sister to stay instead of her. Until next time, bye.